uh, Rob.com celebrated its 10th anniversary uh, with a big conference, big international conference in Ohrid, uh, uh, in Macedonia, right? Uh, this year, or maybe the next year, I don't remember exactly, I'm going to celebrate uh, my, my 10th anniversary with Proz. And uh, I already mentioned, uh, maybe in some private dialogue, that 100% of my clients came from or through Proz.com. Uh, 10 years is a big time, a long time. Um, long enough to analyze things and uh, make some conclusions. But when I look back at the conferences uh, initiated and uh, held by PROS, um, I see how the accents have changed. Uh, first, those were conferences, uh, kind, of, kind of get together uh, with an educated element. Uh, there were conferences where people could meet Proscom, uh, learn about it. Then uh, there was a period of specialization uh, where certain aspects of translation business or uh, linguistic aspects were uh, in the focus of, the te of, the te of attention. Uh, as for me, uh, I used to be an active participant in conferences, and what I like doing is uh, sharing, sharing my experience, sharing my knowledge, uh, sometimes being provocative, or should I say provocative? Provocative, provocative yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to encourage thinking. There are no universal recipes as to how to achieve success. There are no universal recipes uh, working uh, in every individual situation as to how to live a happy life uh, as a freelancer. Uh, so I just try to give ground for thought. And this last session, I uh, hope you'll put up with me for an hour or so for the last time in these two days. Um, again, uh, I'm going to share my thoughts, which are kind of philosophical. Uh, but these thoughts have to do uh, with uh, my place, not only in the translation business, uh, but also in, in the society on the whole. Uh, the title of this, of this session uh, is uh, is there life beyond freelancing? Let us answer this question right now and we'll do some arithmetic. What is the typical retirement age? 60 to 65, right? Uh, what is the age when uh, we start, well, active, independent, professional life? 20 plus, 20 something, yeah? Uh, before that we go, we, we do our schooling, then the college, so at uh, 20 plus we are independent professionals and uh, one of the, the, the first option is to get oneself a job. What is the average length, what is the average duration of a holiday, a vacation, uh, a leave, when you have a, uh, an in-house position? 24 days. 24 days. 24 days in this country. Sometimes two weeks, yeah, in Japan it's very short, I think. Uh, the girls from the office, they have a two, week, two weeks uh, leave, uh, annual leave, right? Uh, all in all, let's say three weeks. Three weeks <clears throat> annually. So we have 45 years of life.
and we have three weeks each year to do all we want, we need, we'd love to do, we'll, we, we, we consider doing, and all that stuff. Ah, you remember the, the, the phrase, uh, what should a man do in his life? Uh, plant a tree, uh, build a house, and uh, uh, raise up a son, right? Uh, how much time do we have to do that? Because if you work in a house, get up in the morning, you have, have breakfast and go for work, uh, you return in the evening, have uh, dinner, and maybe watch TV, uh, watch some football, but if you, if you, if you, have, if you have feel up to it, you have a walk with the kids maybe, or with the dog, uh, uh, but mostly uh, the evening time is uh, to rest after a long working day, and the weekend is again to restore your workability after uh, a, work, a working week. So, during this period, we will have 45 multiplied by 3. 1. Uh, up to 3 years. Uh, there are 52 weeks in a year, right? Yeah. So, we have. Less than three years of life. Yeah, for planting a tree is quite enough. For building a house, it's just enough, maybe. For raising a son, it's hardly enough. Uh, for visiting all the places you'd love to visit, for doing all the things you'd love to do, three years in a lifetime is. Well, I think it's too little. That is my answer to the question of whether it, there is life beyond freelancing. Yes, there is, but not its much. duration is very, uh, very short. Yeah, not much of it. Um, let's look at the quality of life uh, beyond freelancing. Uh, what? Is, who knows the statistics in Ukraine? What is the average uh, wages or salary in Ukraine? Pardon? 2500 million. 2500. That is. Uh, like 300 million. Like 300 million. Enough to plant a tree. Um, 300 dollars um, monthly. Well, with the subsistence level. Um, uh, let's not talk about the bad things. Uh, for building a house, uh, we probably have to work for about 100, 100 or 150 years to earn some money, to earn money enough to build a house. So I guess the quality of life beyond freelancing is also, at least in this country, it is also leaves much to be desired. That is again my answer. Uh, that is my choice. I. I have only one choice uh, between freelancing and in-house work, it's freelancing. Uh, it's not only about the time uh, we have for doing uh, the things we like, it's not only about money, it's also about uh, freedom and independence. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is not my definition. Uh, this definition came from a colleague uh, of ours, uh, a Bulgarian translator. Hodis uh, defines freedom as ability to do things you want to do, and independence as ability not to do things you don't want to do. Uh, in this case, if we agree to his definitions, uh, freelance, freelancing is a perfect balance between freedom and uh, independence. This is something I like too. Uh, not balance, rather combination. Yeah, well, balance or combination, describe it uh, the way you like, but still, it's it's uh, uh, a compromise, maybe. Balanced between. combination. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean that freelancing 
gives you all the time in the world to, to do things you need, you'd love to do. Because when I look back at the 10 years of active international freelancing, when jobs started coming my way very actively, for, for about three or years, or a bit longer, oh, our guests from Kiev, our ladies from Kiev are leaving, so let's say goodbye to them, and we hope we'll see them again someday in the future. Mm -hmm. So have a safe and good trip and see you. So, when I remember the, probably, the period from the second to the fifth year of my freelancing, uh, the family didn't see me. I translated 15 hours a day, uh, weekends including, uh, no vacation for three years, and uh, it had its consequences. Uh, very bad consequences uh, to get rid of them. It took me about more than half a year. Uh, so, if one, one option doesn't look very attractive, I mean the in-house option doesn't uh, seem very attractive, uh, the freelancing option can be very attractive uh, and can be as absorbing as, well, kind of mania, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Mm. obsession, yeah, yeah, uh, with, uh, I mean, uh, with, often with money as the primary incentive. And here, I'm, I'm coming to the, to the second part of my presentation, and also uh, I'll try, I'll, uh, I'd like to start with a story. Uh, in 2008, when the crisis started, I had a certain amount, um, a hefty lump of uh, money uh, at one of Ukrainian banks. Uh, the bank went bankrupt. Uh, the story of this money is uh, two and a half years long. Uh, we finally got it back, uh, all to the last kopeck, to the last uh, green to the last uh, euro. Um, and probably the worst thing was irritation, uh, the inability to use that money, uh, though there was no actually need for that money. Uh, that pushed me towards the conclusion. Actually, the conclusion is obvious. I don't have needs. Uh, I don't have anything to spend that money on. Well, does it, does it mean that I earn more than I need? That well, looks like it. So, uh, I tried, I remember I was telling about the, the, the analysis of the family budget, what, what, what uh, I've, uh, we've been spending money for. Uh, it turned out that I bought most of the things I, I, I'd like to have, and uh, sometimes at least, um, I've bought too many things. Uh, I can't drive three cars simultaneously, I can't uh, live in a few houses simultaneously at the same time. Uh, so, probably um, some, uh, a few purchases. Uh, or a bit of an excess, uh, still I regard them as, as uh, an investment, and it's a good investment, uh, I can tell you. Uh, nevertheless, uh, indeed, my earnings exceed my expenses. That's a perfect situation, but uh, then, what's the purpose of earning? To create a cushion in case something happens? Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, that is, uh, when my government bro tells me that I have to uh, follow some pension program, uh, paying money to the government so that when I uh, reach the retirement age, uh, they will uh, provide me with a lifelong pension. Well, again, I like thinking. I have a 50-50 chance to survive the retirement age. 
or yeah, then the pension I will most likely get uh, will be enough to uh, buy the petrol for one of my cars and probably uh, cigarettes to keep me through one week, but not more. Mm, uh, if I if I if I pay all the money they want me to pay, I will uh, pay ten times as much as they promise me to pay back. Should I do that? And uh, if if not, how can I guarantee my happy and healthy life uh, when I'm old and crippled? Well. I try to manage my earnings, I try to manage uh, my mm, assets, financial assets including, uh, and I hope I can do it better than my government. Uh, I emphasize my government. Maybe or probably in other countries the situation is a bit different. Uh, you can not only hope, you can believe. <laughs> well, I, I do believe that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, the medical insur insurance, again, uh, mentioned more than once uh, yesterday. Uh, there are two sides to each coin, to each metal. Uh, medical uh, health, program, uh, health programs, uh, medical insurance tells me, don't worry about your health. You needn't care about your health. You just pay money to the, uh, for the insurance and we'll take care of you. Is it that the correct approach, is it the proper approach, uh, do, I, do I need to be deprived, uh, do I have to be deprived of the right to control my life, not only uh, within the limits of my, of my personal house or of my apartment, but beyond that also? Now, I want to be in complete control of my life that of, my, of, of my, my own life and that of my family, uh, well, given the right to well, my daughters uh, for their, their own decisions, certainly. Uh, the following conclusion is we can quantify uh, our needs. And that's probably, uh, this approach could be useful for those um, still needing uh, an improvement in their translation careers. We want to achieve a certain level of uh, well-being. This level can be measured in figures. How much does an apartment cost? What is the price of a good house? Uh, do you want a new car? Or maybe if you, if you uh, do some calculations you will see that uh, riding a taxi every day will, co will cost you cheaper. Uh, it will actually. So if you want uh, transport, you can use a taxi and save money, uh, which otherwise you could use uh, for a new car or for a car, for the first car, and buy yourself comfort. Uh, I, again, I'm referring to the categories of expenditures we discussed yesterday. Uh, using that distribution of expenses by categories, you can quantify your needs uh, for the next period, not, not that long, I'd say. Uh, life is too unpredictable with uh, you know, too many factors influencing it. Uh, and in my view, the main factor of influence uh, in the development of modern society is uh, individuals with uh, financial assets equaling financial assets of uh, an average country. So uh, they, can have, they can influence the situation in the world. Um, not, 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 not all countries can influ have such influence on the uh, development of the world as these individuals. Uh, they can hire armies, they can buy uh, production assets, they can uh, make everybody uh, Fed, up, fed and happy, yeah, well fed, or um, vice versa, they can make everybody hungry and uh, striving for, for some resource. Well, uh, life is 
controlled or at least guided not only by countries but also by individuals mm, that's my opinion but I'm debating uh, I don't like this system I don't like this structure I want to be outside of it so um, I quantified my my aims and targets and purposes what do I want at this age uh, at this moment of my life what do I want what do I need uh, do I need to earn more? Not exactly. Uh, collecting money, <laughs> uh, like a collection, I mean, um, it's not my my aim. And well, I want to be happy, and I try to be happy uh, within the limits of this political, socio-economic structure in this country uh, or in this international society. Thanks God uh, the Iron Curtain is down, uh, the mm, restrictions on foreign travel uh, have been mostly removed and uh, I've had a chance for the last five years, uh, I've had a chance to visit, well, I've been through entire Europe with the exception of Portugal probably, it's too long a way to drive in a car uh, and we haven't been to the Scandinavian countries yet. So, well, you always have to leave something for the desert, probably. Uh, personal aims, I mean, uh, the aims that refer to well-being can be quantified, can be digitalized, can be expressed in figures of income. Uh, in our situation, uh, I mean a situation uh, typical for Ukraine, uh, they are easily quantified and they're easily achievable uh, precisely because the tax burden is not that high and the, um, it's the, avoidable. <laughs> and the fiscal pressure is pretty much avoidable. Uh, that, that's exactly uh, so. Uh, on the other hand, when somebody from Belgium tells me they pay up to 70% of their income in taxes, I ask them, why do you stay in Belgium? Come to Ukraine. <laughs> no, no, Ukraine is not the best way, uh, the best place to uh, to live, I, I believe. Uh, but there is Bulgaria, there is uh, Thailand, uh, there are any uh, a number of other Turkey. yeah nice places with a m more favorable climate, uh, more agreeable climate, I'd say uh, probably. Uh, where the sun shines not only three days uh, during the year, uh, but longer, uh, where the tax pressure is uh, not that uh, unbearable, uh, where you can buy, buy indeed, medical service or utility services at the same quality and at a, at a fraction of a price we pay either in Belgium or in Ukraine. Uh, the world is going on. It's becoming very much international. It's uh, globalized uh, to an extent that uh, national borders uh, start disappearing. Uh, and we are free to choose uh, a place to live and uh, the way of living. Um, nobody can stop us from doing that. Uh, during my vacation in uh, Bulgaria a month ago, I met a guy from Norway. Uh, he has been a sailor for the for 30 years, I believe. Uh, his his pension is about 2,000 euro, uh, but uh, his health uh, is uh, giving way, and he has has a cancer. He, there is a problem with his lungs and kidney and everything. He said, "I don't have more than a year, but I would like to live this year." Uh, in a place which I like. Norway, where a pack of tobacco uh, is about uh, 35 euro. Norway. I'm going to Norway to get a stamp in my passport and come back to the beautiful seaside, uh, sea coast uh, near uh, Golden Sands or Golden Beach, I don't remember the title. Yeah, to spend the rest of my life here because I like it here. Uh, that's something I might be contemplating a bit later in my life. So far, 
uh, I feel happy here. But with the government we've, we've chosen, uh, the pressure is getting stronger. I'm sorry for getting political. Uh, we cannot avoid being political uh, in this world. Uh, the pressure is getting stronger. Uh, they've mm, squeezed me out of business, uh, out of legal business, uh, with their taxes absolutely unreasonable, uh, with their limitations for my operations with foreign clients. Why? Why can't I? No. You just you can't because just you just can't. That's the reasoning of my government. Well, I don't I don't want to be told what I'm allowed to do uh, and what I'm not allowed to do, even if somebody thinks it's not legal. It's uh, a decision taken up from the ceiling, as I say. I want to control my own life, and probably if the pressure gets stronger, I may be thinking about relocating to a, a place. Or it's not that strong. It doesn't mean uh, that the pressure will not get there. The world is changing way too fast. Uh, and if I mentioned a few countries uh, in Bulgaria, the corporate tax is 15%. That's it. Uh, in Thailand, uh, business uh, target, targeting foreign tourists can be very very profitable. Uh, there are opportunities uh, virtually everywhere, especially for us uh, speaking different languages. Well, we can find ourselves a job almost in any place of the world. Uh, what stops us from that? In Asia, anchors, I call it anchors, we, we prefer stability and uh, uh, please let uh, I, 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 I beg uh, in text. Uh, I beg your pardon, but stability uh, is not the primary parameter in my cooperation with clients. Uh, in July, uh, a project, uh, a localization project, or well, a translation project actually, uh, brought brought me twelve thousand. Well, I don't mind having uh, idle two weeks after the project. Uh, so I don't want the stability, the 100% workload. After such a big project, a pretty urgent one, I appreciate the rest. So I don't want stability uh, in terms of workload. I want high rate, even with uh, unstable workload. That's, for me, it's more important. Coming back, returning to the uh, digitalization. If we mm, look at our personal aims and targets uh, through the prism of uh, figures, I believe uh, very often we can describe, mm, we can uh, express them in the amount of money we need to earn to do that or to get this. Whether it's a, a holiday or on an ocean island or, or a new car or, or maybe something belonging to the category of status. Yeah, I know some of us love knives uh, and pay unreasonably high <laughs> prices for uh, nice looking knives. And you well, buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we, we, we should give uh, ourselves pleasures, so collection, uh, collecting items uh, is one of them. Hobbies. Hobbies is an expense item, so no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But basic needs, yeah, comfort, uh, education, what other categories? Uh, comfort, education, entertainment, which includes vacations. They, they are easily expressed in terms of uh, amounts of money one needs to earn to get that. And that gives you a very uh, solid ground for identifying your rates. Well, again, simple arithmetic. Uh, if I want a new, a new apartment or uh, a house for myself, yes, uh, uh, at 24 uh, I graduate from a university and uh, 
still I don't uh, I don't have enough money even to rent a separate apartment. Uh, I need an apartment for myself and maybe for my future family. How much time do I need to earn enough money to buy it? Fifteen years? That's too much. But if I uh, if my rate is three cents per word, I will have to work for fifteen years at least. When uh, do I want to buy it? Well, in a couple of years. That is a reasonable uh, time. In this case, my rate should be at least ten cents per word, and that's great. Uh, this is something uh, which gives you ground, uh, which lets you be confident in your rates. Uh, pretty often, especially uh, a few years ago, uh, my clients told me, oh, your rates are very high, especially considering the fact that uh, life in Ukraine is uh, much cheaper than it is in the West. Did you? Did you notice that life in Ukraine is cheaper? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's not cold. Mm -hmm. well, not that much. well, 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 well. Ukrainians saying that life is uh, in, in Ukraine is cheaper or not cheaper, uh, you may be biased. Uh, those uh, who spend their life, oh, well, two days is not enough. But uh, I believe that if you want to survive, uh, it's cheaper to survive in Ukraine. But if you, have, if you want to uh, have the same level of comfort, the same level of quality, uh, either in food or in services, uh, in goods, you'll have to, buy, to pay 30 to 50% extra, at least for transport uh, costs. Yeah? So, uh, if you compare life uh, of the same standards in Spain or Italy or and Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian life may turn out, turn out to be more expensive. A friend and a colleague of mine recently relocated to France uh, and bought a house in a small town some 20 minutes drive from the uh, from the sea coast. Uh, he said the money uh, he spent on that house sh uh, could only be enough to buy a dog's canora. What's the English for Kanura? Yeah, yeah. dogs uh, uh, in Moscow. Yeah. Now, can you join me uh, in this in this thinking? Can you, uh, do you agree with me? Uh, can you tell me where I might be wrong? Uh, I have my, I have one small note about. Uh, be a right approach basing on the fact that you are a professional, right? Because mm -hmm. things you are saying uh, would mostly be appropriate for a mature professional who knows what he's doing, he has a reputation. Right? So uh, then you can go to higher measures and raise rates and so on. Look at the things from a different angle. Because we have to understand that there's a difference between a young specialist and between uh, a guy who's worked for 15 years. And so, uh, speaking of rates, and if you are just 24, and if you want to buy an apartment in two years, okay, let me set my rate at 10 cents per word, it won't be realistic, you would agree. Because you don't have any experience, you don't have any clients, and you simply don't know where to go. You spend at least one year looking for a way to stick into the market. Yeah, correction accepted, really. Uh, if you're a recent graduate uh, who doesn't know the ins and outs of the profession, uh, who doesn't know the tricks of the trade, uh, who has to accumulate experience, uh, it will take, well, certain time uh, to, to do all this uh, before we can start, we can start in a real uh, professional career. Uh, depending on the ability to learn it may take uh, from a few months to a few years. I would add that setting a high rate for yourself would be a good motivator for uh, continuous self-improvement and self-learning. So a high rate would be the first step you need to achieve to 
get further. That would be a good idea for a start. Exactly. And uh, if I didn't mention flowers, uh, uh, I would be, I would not be myself. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you know about it already. Uh, when I discovered that I don't need to earn more money, uh, I decided to work less. Uh, I managed to do that. But uh, the spare time, how could I use it? And I, I found myself a hobby uh, which I'm quite passionate about. Uh, garden flowers. Surprisingly, uh, when the, the quantity of them increased, it started turning into a commercial activity. At least my neighbors uh, started buying flowers from me. And uh, uh, as, I, as I have special flowers, if it's tulips, they have um, uh, the bulbs of water in Amsterdam. Uh, if it's lilies, uh, they're not the usual ones. And the special ones, they don't come cheap. Uh, it's kind of, uh, how can I categorize flowers for, for my neighbors? Huh? What category of expenditures is that? Comfort. Comfort? Uh, um, probably entertainment. It's a hobby, yeah? It's a, a hobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some basic needs. And it's a basic need, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, to a certain extent, it's uh, several categories, yeah. For somebody, it's, uh, well, even status, yeah. Having, having a, a flower blossoming uh, after the first frosts, uh, well, well in the middle of November. Uh, that's a rarity. Ah, but there are flowers that do that. Or early spring, when, uh, when there are uh, patches of dirty snow still uh, in the shadows, uh, in the shadowy parts of the terrain, flowers coming up, and you are the first to own them. Yeah, so it's status, really. Yeah. Yeah, I give away quite a lot, but. Uh, in translation, I do the same. You know, when my uh, when somebody, a neighbor, uh, comes and asks me for a translation service, says, "Well, I bought uh, this medicine uh, for for my old mother. Uh, could you please translate uh, this? Uh, what do you call it? Well, the translation. Well, the translation. Could you explain just very quickly what it says? No, no, no. Uh, Probably they know I, I'm a translator, so they ask me to translate. Uh, and, uh, we'll pay for it. I never take money, uh, whether it's a medicine or a hair dryer or a shampoo uh, with no uh, Russian or Ukrainian uh, explanation. Uh, because I don't uh, do what they ask me. I tell, you, I tell them, oh, look, uh, what the important thing is, drink it twice a day, uh, two drops only. Uh, the rest you don't need it. Uh, or maybe uh, the, with a hair dryer or a, a new iron. Uh, there is nothing to translate because it's a usual hair dryer. There is nothing to translate. Uh, and even when you, they try to give me a chocolate for my work, uh, in brackets, yeah, for my work, uh, I refuse. But when a good friend of mine asks me to quickly translate, yeah, you are a translator, yeah, could you please, we, we suddenly got a message from, from our partners, uh, uh, could you please do it? Uh, as a favor, and it turns out to be a commercial contract uh, for a half a billion, uh, a few thousand dollars, uh, eight, per eight pages long. I never do it free uh, for, for the best friends of mine, because there is uh, favors, there are favors, and there is work. For work, I get paid. For favors, I do not. So, uh, the same with flowers. As a favor, I give out quite a lot. Uh, but certain, certain plants, they, uh, it took, um, they needed care, I cared about them, uh, I spent money for buying them, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it turned into a commercial project and it is sold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. Comments, questions, or have I, have I given enough food for thought during these two days, being the, uh, playing the one-man show? Yeah, Angela, please. Yeah. Understand exactly where you are, where you've been, where you're going. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, I've, I've had cancer twice. Yeah. You know that. And um, we've had other family problems. I uh, I spend a great deal of each working day um, dreaming that I'm going to move to Phuket. Mm -hmm. And I've got a friend who's looking for an apartment. And then my uh, my son says, yeah, but we could buy a place in Brazil. And someone else said, you could buy a place in California. So we, we look and we daydream about this. Mm -hmm. And it keeps us going. But what you call anchors, we call tides. I have a mother who is 81 and she lives mm -hmm. in the UK. Mm -hmm. I have a mother-in-law who is 86 and she lives 20 miles down the road. Mm -hmm. um, my son and my daughter for the moment, are uh, they still need us. And mm -hmm. I, I could pack up and disappear. I have the money put away yeah, to buy an yeah, apartment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Angela, uh, what, what I uh, mean by anchors is our, our psychological uh, need to be stable, uh, our, our fear of changes, our fear of the unknown. Uh, what you mentioned are the reasons not to do that. Yeah, not I'm, to I'm move. extremely frustrated because I, I think I am 55, there's a, a very huge percentage of, of um, negative percentage that I won't see 60 because of, of my health problems. Yeah. So I think, why should I spend my, you know, the five years that I have left um, spending my money to go and, and sit with my old mother who does nothing but complain and go and see my mother-in-law who sits there and complains and listen to my daughter complaining and my son complaining. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they are, um, they are the people who made me, they are people I made. And I feel responsibilities towards them. Yeah. Um, and I think you can compromise. You've compromised with your flowers. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start compromising with my creative writing and, and the other things that I do, the, the pro bono work I do with, uh, with various things. And why not? I, I, had, I had to have counseling because when the cancer came back the second time, I lost the plot. I was a panic attack every single day. And um, I went for counseling and my counselor said, you can't escape uh, the, the cloud of cancer that hangs over your head. That is there. You have to live with that. And you have to live with the fact that you could walk out of this door and get knocked over by a bus. Yeah. So really there is no difference in that. She said, but if you feel the need to live out a dream, but you also know that you wouldn't be able to live out that dream to the full because you have your responsibilities, your ties. Mm -hmm. um, she said, rent an apartment in Copacabana or rent an, mm -hmm. uh, and you can work from there and you can, mm -hmm. you can compromise yeah. like that. And okay, it's not 100% perfect, but then what is 100% perfect? Mm -hmm. The cancer's not going to go away. The, uh, you know, the day that the 81 year old mother or 82 year old mother is no longer there, then you will regret the things that you haven't done for that person, so you need to do with that. So, I, I, you know, I am completely on your way with anything. Um, I think there are ways that we can, uh, we can, we are lucky enough to be able to work out of here. Yeah. You can take it with you, so you can um, shape your lifestyle to take into the good things. We, um, we moved out of the apartment where you stayed, mm -hmm. to the apartment where we're living now. And um, my, my children don't like that apartment, and I don't care. Because I work from home, I pay a lot of the bills. My work allows them to have a fancy apartment, each in one in Milan and one in Rome, so they can study and we get intellectuals and that. Um, I have to stay at home and bring home the bacon, so I decided that I wanted a garden. I want to be able to get up in the morning, open my windows and have an olive tree outside my window. I want to be able to sit in my office and I have um, a passion flower plant. Yeah. So when I look out of my window, I just see passion flower all year round. Uh, when I have my morning coffee, I go and stand out in the garden and I, I see which plants are. That, that, you know, I understand your, your flower <laughs> position. I chose that. The apartment is not what made my family happy, but it's made me happy. It's not yeah. it's just me. Mm. Okay, so I'm not alone in, in my way of thinking. Yeah, nice. Yeah, about uh, five years ago, up until five years ago, I often went to uh, libertarian conferences. It's uh, kind of politically, ideologically uh, denomination, maybe. Not everyone is familiar with it. 
on this conference I met an American and he invited me to come to a, a comp to, to the summer camp in Vilnius and uh, there I met a girl and uh, I married her and after that I moved to Belarus and got involved in translation and um, I feel that when I hear you talking today I feel that maybe I have completed a circle because when I hear, you, hear your perspective on individual liberty and uh, your relation towards the state, I think the, maybe I'm on the same wavelength as well. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm very happy that uh, this last session of mine wasn't uh, was understood and approved by at least a part of it. And I, I could add to that. Yeah. Um, I could a little bit. Yeah, please. Um, that I've, I've never felt identified by what I do for a living. You know, I am not defined by a translator. Mm -hmm. I'm not defined by anything else. And I still sometimes wonder if I will ever know what I really want to do. Probably won't. Mm -hmm. It's a bit late. But uh, translating is perhaps the nearest thing. But uh, this way of life enables me to combine other threads. Um, we were having a conversation the other night, one of my other activities is making bread. Um, and one of the ladies here has given me some as a, from Ukraine as a, as a gift. And uh, <laughs> uh, I also have a garden. And despite the climate of Scotland, I try to grow fruit and vegetables. Um, and, uh, um, there are, and, and I can get outside and enjoy the open air and fitness and things like this. And there is such a quality of life. Um, so it, it's just that this enables enables one to be quite authentic, I think. You know, it's a quality yeah, of life. Authenticity is a part of it too, yeah. Yeah, and, and translating remains an act of love rather than a, a mechanical desperation for money. But that's all. Yeah, great, great, great. Well, uh, so to finish this session, uh, I will quote uh, the slogan uh, on my Skype account. Life is too good to waste it on translation. <laughs> Thank you. And that's perhaps the end of it. Uh, thank you all for participation. Thanks uh, our sponsor in text translation company for their coming and uh, showing the uh, other uh, side of things. Uh, thank you all for, your, for all your contributions both financial and physical, being there, listening to the speakers, uh, telling, sharing your thoughts, uh, giving your ideas, exchanging your knowledge, uh, both during the conference and in all in-betweens, uh, even in Stargard yesterday, uh, which I hope most of you enjoyed. Uh, and see you somewhere else. Life is uh, short, but it's long enough to uh, circle the globe very, very many times, and uh, life is weird, uh, I can tell you. So, uh, I won't be surprised uh, if next time uh, I meet some of you in the most unexpected place or in the most unexpected situation, uh, somewhere behind the equator or another part of the world, or maybe in the streets of Harco. And I'll be happy to see all of you and each of you any place any place, any time. Thank you a lot.